Hey Nathan, it's Wednesday, February 4th. Your video on Monday was so good, it covered a lot of really important information about vaccines. Vaccines are so important, in fact, that I've decided to continue the discussion and talk about the history of vaccines. Let's start with etymology. The words vaccine and vaccination derive from the Latin vaccinus or vaccinus, which means of or from the cow. But why? Like, what do cows have to do with vaccines? Well, they kind of helped humans create them, in a way. Okay, so the smallpox virus used to be a really big deal. It's been infecting humans for thousands of years, thought to have emerged around 10,000 BCE. The disease used to be responsible for a lot of human strife. It's killed pharaohs and kings with a 20 to 60% chance of death, over 80% for children, practically wiped out large populations of people when it was brought to the Americas, and is all around not really a fun disease to endure. So unsurprisingly, people have worked really hard to get rid of it. The Chinese developed a method of attack against the disease around 1,000 years ago through the practice of variolation. Also referred to as inoculation, doctors would attempt to achieve immunization by infecting the patient with a very weak strain of smallpox, either taken from someone already infected with the disease or someone who had been inoculated recently. The doctors did this by making trivial scratches on the skin and then rubbing in either fluids from smallpox blisters or kind of like powdered smallpox scabs. The practice was brought to the West by Lady Mary Wortley Montague in 1721, where it became somewhat popular despite its risks. People could potentially die from the inoculation if it was too strong or they were too weak or whatever, but it did help to prevent disease. Thankfully, the trend of variolation was a stepping stone toward the concept of vaccination. Here's where the cows come in. In 1796, English physician Edward Jenner tested a theory that had been inspired in him years before. It was noticed in rural areas that people who worked with cows never got infected with smallpox, possibly due to their infection of cowpox. Cowpox, a very similar disease to smallpox but with much milder effects on humans, would travel from infected udders to the hands of people who milked them. The immune system of the dairy workers were able to build up a defense well enough that they were immunized against smallpox. To experiment, Jenner rubbed some pus from an infected milkmaid's hand into a scratch on an eight-year-old boy's arm. Six weeks later, he did the same thing except with smallpox the boy didn't catch smallpox. By 1798, the smallpox vaccine was declared safe by Jenner for children and adults and became a much more popular alternative to the risky variolation method. Jenner's name for cowpox was variolae vaccinae, and almost 100 years later, Louis Pasteur suggested to honor Jenner, we should call all new types of preventative inoculation vaccines. Pasteur was responsible for the creation of the anthrax, rabies, and cholera vaccines at the end of the 1800s, and the 1900s saw an explosion of all kinds of new successful vaccines. American microbiologist Maurice Hillman created over 36 vaccines during the 1900s. He saved more lives than any other medical scientist in the 20th century. And yet people believe that vaccines are bad. I mean, they're, they're bad for the virus, that's for sure. Did I mention that smallpox was declared eradicated by the end of the 1970s? That means it's gone. It's not infecting people anymore. We killed it off by preventing people from catching it. It literally just died out because it couldn't survive in people's bodies due to their immunizations. Because of the work of these scientists and others over the past few hundred years, we've been able to develop vaccines for so many kinds of diseases like polio and measles, mumps, and rubella and influenza, and tetanus, and hepatitis A and B, and diphtheria, and so many more. They are created diligently and expertly by incredibly intelligent people, and we should all be super happy we have them. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for getting me vaccinated, and Nathan, we'll see you on Friday. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Um, Nathan and I both feel that this topic is very important, especially with what Nathan was talking about on Monday with the recent outbreak of measles and all kinds of other diseases that are going around in countries where vaccines are readily available. Um, so I ask you to please share these videos that we've been making and click thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave a comment about your thoughts on vaccines and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.